Good afternoon. It's another Thursday edition of the Ellen Carrington Show. Thanks once again for tuning in. And for those of you who reside in Florida, please stay safe today. Um, got some news about Hurricane Andrea coming in. And I um, also received word that flood watches, tropical storm warnings, and a tornado watch are in effect for the Tampa Bay area. Also received a photo from a friend down in Florida of Clearwater Beach. Um, I posted on my Facebook page and on my Twitter feed if you'd like to take a look at that. Um, be posting that later on. And a few news items today before we get to our main topic. First off, if you've seen the latest commercial for Cheerios, you're likely heard the controversy surrounding it. And this new TV ad, as a matter of fact, just before I came on the air, they, they showed it on uh, one of my local stations. It features an interracial couple with a biracial child. And what this little girl does, she asks her white mother if Cheerios are actually good for heart health. It's not the exact words, it's just paraphrasing on my part. And when mom tells her they do, the next shot shows an African-American father Waking up with Cheerios all over his chest, the right side of his chest where his heart is, or left side, I'm sorry. Um, personally, I saw nothing wrong with this ad. Actually, I thought it was kind of cute. But when this ad appeared on a YouTube um, video, the comments section was just peppered with various racist posts. It was just disgusting. But it got to the point where... The comments section was disabled, and rightfully so, because, you know, come on, people, really. Are you really that closed-minded? It's the 21st century. Get with the times. You know, it's appalling how many small minds are still in the world this day and age, and if people want to date, marry, and have families outside their own races, that's their choice, and they shouldn't be crucified for it. You know, it's not my thing, but if someone else wants to do it and go that route, yeah, I'm not going to judge them. You know, love's love. You know, whether you're male, female, white, black, purple, green, red, whatever. If you're if that person's right for you, by all means, go for it. Okay? And while we're on the subject of food, we're going to skip here from Cheerios to ice cream. Which one has the most nuts, you ought to wonder? And a report from Shop Smart's newsletter reported some results from a taste test of butter pecan ice cream with a few brands you may be familiar with. And believe it or not, and this didn't shock me by the way, Hagen Dawes was the nuttiest. And the shop smart people actually weighed the amount of nuts in each of these ice creams. And Hagen Dawes had about nine grams of nuts. Good fistful, like per half cup serving. And the ice cream nuts came in second and this kind of threw me a little bit considering it's considered a quote-unquote off-brand, Walmart's brand, Great Value, came in second with five grams of nuts per half cup serving. Isn't that unbelievable? Yeah, and for a cheap ice cream, that's pretty good. So who came up short on the nut end? Blue Bunny, per half cup serving, wait for it, 3.5 grams of nuts. Eh, so much for butter pecan. It's probably more butter than pecan, but okay. Uh, keep all these in mind the next time you have a craving for a butter pecan ice cream. After all, aren't the nuts the best part? At least I think so. You know? <laughs> Excuse me. Still battling the hay fever, but we're, we're getting better. Since there's some rain today, it might help cut down on that a little bit, but I digress. Uh, talking about another controversial subject as we discussed the whole Cheerios commercial thing er earlier. This story comes out of Silverdale, Washington. Uh, teen girl was kicked out of her prom for being, wait for it, too busty. Yes, you heard correctly. Brittany Meyer's search for the perfect prom dress took her all the way to Canada. But when she arrived at her senior prom wearing her brand new gown which was a strapless gown, by the way. She was turned away. Why? Strapless dresses were allowed as long as cleavage, midriff, and lower back were covered, which just sounds pretty reasonable, am I right? However, Minder said she is bigger chested, 
therefore having more cleavage and quote unquote, there's nothing I can do about that. Which is true, short of having a breast reduction, but why? You know, it's crazy. But Minder's parents chimed in about this and said their daughter was singled out for having a larger chest and how unfairly the rule was enforced. And her mother, Kim, kind of weighed in on this and she said, quote, all women are not created equal and you cannot compare a golf ball to a grapefruit. It ain't going to happen. Uh, on the good side of this, if you want to call it that, I mean, you pick out a nice dress, you spend months planning this thing. And she ended up having to wear a shawl. But in any case, her parents are demanding a public apology. Um, and I'm probably going to get flamed with it for this, but I really don't care. But I'm going to have to side with the parents and Brittany on this one. Because as I said earlier, once you plan a dress for months for one of the biggest events in high school, I mean, proms only come once in a lifetime, okay? And it shouldn't be ruined just because someone has bigger boobs than anyone else. Considering I've seen far worse prom dresses on smaller chested girls and girls of all sizes. I mean, I, some of these dresses, prom dresses, they look like, and I don't want anyone taking offense here. I'm just speaking my opinion on this. They actually look more like something you'd wear on a street corner to work a certain <clears throat> profession than going to the prom. So that, in any case, I can guarantee if Miss Minor wore an A-cup bra, I bet no one would have cared either way. Think about that for a minute. I bet you any money this would have never been an issue. But that's my, again, that's my opinion. As a well-endowed in the upper structure myself, and yes, they are real, ladies and gentlemen. I was blessed by Mother Nature. I'm not bragging, just putting it out there. But I can identify with this young lady's situation. While rules should be enforced which is great. You know, singling out someone because of their breast size isn't cool. Hate the game, people, not the player. All right? Uh, you know, that's just crazy. But now that I have your attention on boobies, here's another booby story, but this one's kind of a positive one. And it should hold your interest for a few minutes. And I read about this yesterday. Women in New York, you're free to walk topless through the city. Great news, right? Uh, New York Police Department officers have been advised that if they see a shirtless woman in public, she should not be arrested. Yeah, there you go. Hey, freedom. The decisions mean going topless will not constitute public lewdness, indecent exposure, or disorderly conduct. So, New York ladies, rejoice. There are probably lots of New York men listening who happen to be happy about this news, too. So, uh... Yeah, how about this new development, no pun intended. Hey, Pittsburgh, wake up. We need this law down in here, too, because I know there are a lot of girls who like to go topless and a lot of men who like to see it. For some reason, they're obsessed with boobies. So why, I don't know, but probably one of life's greater mysteries. So, now that I have everyone's attention, we're going to go on today's main topic. And this is another message board I visited recently, a couple of them, and I even threw the question out there on one. Uh, if you could live the life of any wrestler, or trade places rather, anyone past or present, who would it be? And I've got quite a few responses. Some were probably no-brainers, and others were thinking, wow, we're kind of shocking. Uh, one, one of the no-brainers, John Cena. Good looking, famous, tons of women, millionaire for life. And at least that has to come from men, you know, <laughs> that's my best guess. Uh, here's a good one from, as somebody said, Lance Storm. He wrestled all over the world, including the big three ECW, WCW, and WWE. Made some good money. Was able to get out of the business before it was too late. And is now resting with home with his own wrestling school and a happy family. Talking about happy endings, uh, especially in this business when you hear, hear about so many guys being broke or they're dying of drug overdoses or they commit suicide or some crazy things. Here's a happy ending for you. There you go. Lance Storm. Uh, another one was, here, a guy had to put this one in. Dolph Ziggler, just for AJ. <laughs> Plus the responders said they'd love selling moves. Nah, take that as you will. Here's another no-brainer. Triple H. And that isn't even close. 
enough said. Next name on the list was Rick Martell. We're going back some ways there. He did everything there was to do in the business. Took care of himself and his money. Another happy ending. Now he has a good life outside of wrestling. Yeah, this is great. And this has got to be definitely another male reply. And you know where their brains are. The Miz, purely for Maurice. <laughs> got another classic here. A million dollar man, Ted DiBiase. Start with boatloads of legit money to use. Ending up redeeming her soul. <laughs> Another happy ending right there. Here's a good one. And this is pretty much a cross between a surprise and a no-brainer too. Chris Jericho. Wealthy and talented wrestler who has been in all three major companies. That's true. Has a great match with about anyone. Good looking and well liked by his peers. And a little bit of trivia about that. He was Bachelor chosen on the 1998 episode of a dating game which featured WDCW wrestlers. I haven't been able to find a video of that online, but so anyone who does find it, uh, shoot me an email or post it on Facebook, whatever. But I just want to take you back on that trivia about 15 years. And here's another response. CM Punk, the guy has had a bunch of hot divas <laughs> and fought his way to the top. Yep, this is a guy response. Seems like a guy who does his best to stay true to his beliefs. Eh, I kind of have to agree with that. And a lot of people said The Rock. And in a way, you got to agree with this. Very good looking man. His charisma. Makes millions in the movie industry. With fun roles. And one of the greatest WWE stars of all times. It would be very good to be The Rock. Yeah, it probably would be. Or even married to him, if you're a lady. Uh, here's a recent reply. Uh, Santino they, uh, gets paid very well to do very little work and loved by children and people with senses of humor. Hey, I gotta agree with that. He's a pretty cool guy. And some other replies um, included Batista, Kevin Nash, Super Shredder, Kane, Jack Briscoe, Sidney Bacabella, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Leaping Lanny Poffo, Ricky Steamboat, Ric Flair, Bret Hart, Undertaker, Goldberg, Daniel Bryan, and Kurt Angle. Hey, Pittsburgh reference. By the way, Kurt has been inducted into the TNA Hall of Fame, in case you didn't hear about that earlier this week. So, we're pretty happy in this city about that. Uh, and here's a great answer. It's So, it rings true in many aspects. It gave me a little chuckle. Uh, the guy replied, he doesn't want to be anybody. Try to place with anybody. I like, because I like not being in constant pain, and my liver, liver toxicity, I like it right where it is. Best answer of the day. I, I like that. And it could apply it to quite a few of us. Um, as I said earlier, while current stars being mentioned is pretty much a given, I kind of expected that. It was also great to see some classic stars and a few independent federation workers mentioned, too. Uh, it's kind of nice guys reach back in the end. Because those indie guys work hard, and I have a lot of respect for them. You know, these guys, sometimes they don't get paid at all. Sometimes they get paid car fare. You know, they go out there, bust their butt for about an hour or two, and they get 20 bucks or whatever, if they get paid at all. So you got to give these guys their kudos they do for doing what they love. And being in pain in the process. Uh, hey, thank you. Know, um, so what was my reply? Any female. Yeah, whether it's in the major promotions or the independents, because think of all the cool guys and tight shorts you get to work and travel with. Okay, my rhyme's in the wrong place, but that's a topic for another show. <laughs> Here come the emails. Oh, you dirty old woman. Yeah, I know. But while we're discussing all things wrestling, uh, this is a press release from yesterday. Uh, WWE announced that... They will be returning to Shanghai, China on August 2nd at the Oriental Sports Center. Uh, the full press release with additional details can be read online. And I will post that link with the others from today's show on the Facebook page. And on a side note, tickets for the Shanghai show may be purchased on Ticket2010.com. And here's something I wanted to share today. As we're going from wrestling to wrestling books, um, I'd like to share a recent email feedback I've gotten on my latest novel in the Cruiserweight series called, you know, called Class Act, which came out. 
uh, the end of March. Uh, the sender commented how much they liked the book, especially what they termed the, quote, the array of different main and minor characters, unquote. They said, another quote, it's very refreshing to see such a diverse group of characters in novels such as yours. Many fiction work have a cookie cutter type of protagonist, but yours are different. It's good to see a small guy such as Donovan Class, that's the main character in Class Act, make it to the top of the wrestling world, just you painted a small guy like Brett Carrington in the original Cruiserweight book. It's also refreshing to see your Native American, Asian, African American, and other minority and most female characters portrayed in such positive manners. Most important, I praise you for including both a bisexual character and yet another who was by curious in class act. As a former independent wrestler, there are many others in the business who are gay or bisexual, given the constant contact they have with each other in the ring. Hey, I kind of figured that out, but then, you know, there's somebody who worked in the indies who you could say confirmed it. And I was very happy to get that email, by the way. I'm always happy to get feedback. So you want to shoot me an email sometime about if you read the book, or there's something you'd like to hear about on the show, or any other suggestion, you can send an email to ratingmerchant, that's one word, at gmail.com. And I'd like to thank that sender for taking time to offer his insights. I know my books won't appeal to everyone, and that's perfectly fine. But it's always good to receive feedback about them, whether it's negative or positive. And the comment I just read shows me just how much some readers look deeper into the stories and what's actually written on the pages. Um, another thing I'd like to discuss today, I'd like to pass on a reminder that I'll be participating in a live author chat on Night Owl Reviews on Monday, June 10th. That starts at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. That's my segment. 5.30 Pacific, of course. If you'd like to view the full chat with the author's schedule under the social and news tab, it's www.nightowlreviews.com. If you haven't signed up on the site, it is free and easy to do so. And you may need to be a member on the site to participate. I'm not sure about that. Uh, wow. Um, got a few minutes left. What better day than Craigslist, Craigslist Crazy Notes? It's raining in Pittsburgh. People are probably bored to death. So let's like pull a couple of uh, reviews. Yeah. How about we go to casual encounters? This should be fun. Okay. Skype fun. The title says it all. Looking to have some fun on Skype with a sexy lady. Very real. It's been raining all day. Hit me up on Skype and they leave their um, number or Skype name. And Saturday hotel room. Ah, nice body. I have a hotel on Saturday afternoon in, they named the city. Anyone up for head whenever we get into five. 10, 170, 6 cut, send face pick for mine if you're available. Okay. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. Nuts are out today. Listen to this. Uh, very simple, ladies. You sit on my face or straddle me and pee on me and in my mouth. Ew! If you're into pee or have thought about pee as a fantasy of yours, this is your chance to have submissive mail at your disposal. Just be completely free of all diseases as I am. I'm open to any age, shape, and race. Your pick gets mine. This is some great, discreet NSA fun, no strings attached, of course. Ew! I don't even want to know. <clears throat> Here, here's something. Here's a good one. I need a girl who sucks like the penguins do. Let me tell you, these guys have been sucking major eggs. Uh, 46 year old man. Seriously, it's been forever since I've been orally pleasured. If there is a lady out there who, out of the kindness of her heart, will just give me a sweet slurpy BJ. Seriously, if the shoe was on the other foot, I would eat your pussy. In fact, if that's what it takes, I'm in. 
I'm okay looking. I date, even have a girlfriend of sorts, but she is not very sexual, and I am. I promise if you do this for me today or tomorrow, I won't bug you get about it again for three months. No pros and no men. Thanks anyway. <laughs> Crazy. Okay. Naughty wife. Here we go. Whoa. Here we go. One a naughty BBW wife who sucks the best cock come on her face and huge breasts or watch her swallow. All while her hubby watches or she takes pics and video for him to see. She wants a very young and hung and she may possibly want you to screw her silly. Send dick pic and face pic. Be real and get her email. Now, I think these guys and women are really in late in trouble on this stuff, you know? Oh, Lord. Got to get in here for one more. Uh, let's see. Yay, do -do 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 -do. Couple looking for bi male or female. Oh, this ought to be good. Yeah, guy's got a nice butt. <laughs> we are looking for a bi male or female that is experienced and versatile. Husband is 5'7", 170 pounds, brown and brown, shaved, and 6 inches. Wife is 5'5", 200 pounds, blonde, blue, shaved, and 40D. Woo! We want someone under the age of 40 and someone that is not into playing games and is for sure by meaning willing to be played with and return the favor from both husband and wife. We are open to host, so please send your stats and pics and what you're open to doing. We are looking for this weekend. Having a panty fish is just a bonus. Oh, God. Ay, yay, yay, yay. You got to wonder what some of these people are thinking, really. Seriously. Ugh. Anyway. But we're winding down for another afternoon of this show. And pending any changes, we'll be back on the air Wednesday, June the 12th at our regular time of 2 o'clock Eastern. Uh, hopefully with some new topics, some news, or whatever. Meanwhile, if you'd like to be a guest, leave a message either on the Facebook wall, send an email to writingmerchant at gmail.com, or you can follow me on Twitter at LACarrington1. So, thanks for listening today. Have a great weekend. Take care, particularly if you live in Florida. Watch out for the hurricanes, and stay safe. Bye.